Speaking Myanmar, Lessons for English-Speaking Learners, Counterwords. In this lesson, I'm going to explain what a qualifying noun is. Sometimes they're called classifying nouns or counterwords, and that's the term I'm going to use, counterwords. It seems easier for me to understand. I think it will for you as well. These can be classified as particles, and you'll need to know them when you want to identify how many of something or someone there is. Now, of particular use will be the counter words for people and days, as these are regularly used in everyday speech. I recommend they should be the first counter words you learn. Lastly, what can you do if you know the noun, but you don't know the specific counter word that goes with it? Well, there's a generic word you can use that'll get you by. So let's begin this lesson. To begin with, let's look at this phrase, two cups of coffee. Now in Myanmar, we're gonna switch the word order around a little bit. Coffee is what we're gonna call the root noun. It's what we're talking about here. And two cups represents how much. So the order is going to be coffee, two, and then a counter word that's used for counting cups, in this case of coffee. So the word for coffee is kopi. That should be an easy word to learn. The word for two, ne. And the counter word for cup is kwe. Sometimes the counter word that's associated with a root noun is only that, a counter word. But other times, as in this case, the counter word for cups of coffee is the actual word for cup, kwe. Now, that's gonna make a little more sense later in this lesson. But let's put it all together. When we do that, we have to soften the sound of one of the syllables. You'll learn why in another lesson. So it's going to sound like this, kopi na kwe. Now, just a note, in English, if you were ordering coffee, you could say two coffees, but that doesn't work in Myanmar. You have to use this counter word with it. Now, I hope that seems fairly easy. If it is, let me complicate it a little bit. Okay, we're going to change this up a little bit. Let's say that you wanted to say two cups, not two cups of coffee, just two cups, as in, please get two cups from the cabinet. Well, before we said that two cups of coffee is kopi nekwe and the word used for cup was kwe so if we want to say two cups would we just say nekwe actually no you're going to use a different counter word for cups and the word is long that's the counter word used for things that are round round like a cup round like a glass bottle, fruit, balls. So on its own, it does not mean cup, as in our first example. So that means two cups would be quetnelon. So what other words could you use this particular counter word with? Well, remember we said that this counter word, long, is a counter word for things that are round. So in addition to cups, we could say two eyes are miasi nalon, because eyes are round. We could also say that four words was sagalon lelon, because words, most Myanmar words are not written using straight lines, are they? They're rounded lines that are used to write words. Lastly, three apples, pandi don long, because apples are pretty much round. Now let's move on to our next example. In our first example regarding cups of coffee, kwe 
was the word for cup. And while it is the word for a cup, it's not the counter word for cup. Sometimes though, a noun and its associated counter word are the same. And when that's the case, the root noun can almost always be dropped. Let me explain it with some examples. So the word for month is la, and its counter word is the same. So two months would be na la. It would not be la na la. The word for year is ne. So the word for five years, na ne. The word for room is ka. But again, that's also the counter word for rooms. So if I wanted to say two rooms, Naka. And the word for hour is also the counter word for hour. So if I wanted to say six hours, chow na yi. Hopefully that makes sense, or it will eventually. So let's look at another example. In this example, I want to be able to say three students. Again, the word order needs to be changed to students, three, and the counter word that we're going to use for students is the same counter word we're going to use for people in general or specific groups of people. So this is going to be our counter word to use for people, something we're going to use a lot of. So the word for student is jounda. The word for three and here's our counter word. Whenever we're talking about people or groups of people, it's yao. That's our people counter word. So put it all together to say three students. Jiang da dong yao. Now let's see how else you could use this counter word yao. So if you want to identify the number of people in a specific group, maybe it's the number of children, the number of teachers there are, you're going to use this counter word. So to say three children, to say five teachers, now if it's just people in general, you could use the noun for people, but you wouldn't have to. If there were five people, you could just say na yao. And that's because the counter word that's used here is only used for people. So it's implied that you're talking about people. In fact, the root word is seldom used when replying to a question. For example, if you were to ask me how many children I have, I would merely answer na yao, two. Now there's one other counter word that's pretty important to learn early on. Let's take a look at that. The next counter word we want to talk about is the counter word that's used for days. So in this example, let's see how you would say seven days. Now the word for day is ne. The word for seven is kunhe. And the counter word for days is yet. But as with the counter word for people, this counter word only applies to days. So you can drop the root noun for day when you're talking about a number of days. So that's going to make seven days kuni yet. Now, there are so many counter words to learn. What can you do if you don't know the correct counter word for a noun? So the good news is there's a counter word you can use when you don't know what the correct counter word is. It's pronounced ku. So let's look at a few examples of nouns that use this counter word. They're the actual counter word for these words. Place is nea. 
So two places would be nea naku. The word for question is megun. So the way to say three questions, megun tonku. The word for a business, longa. So one business, if you're counting, longa tonku. So until you learn the matching counter words for nouns, you can try using this counter word, but try to learn a few basic ones first. Definitely the counter word for people and days. So let's review what we discussed in this lesson. In this lesson, we talked about quantifying nouns, counter words. That's a separate word used to identify how many of something or someone there is. The order is noun, number, and then the counter word. Although sometimes you won't need the root noun. The counter word used for people is yao. It may or may not be accompanied by the root noun. And the counter word for day is yet. And doesn't normally include the root noun. These are two good counter words you can put to work right away. Many words use this generic counter word, ku. And if you don't know the exact counter word, you can always try this one. And that finishes this lesson.